Hello, today we're going to continue our study of exponents and logarithms, and we're going to think about how we can use that knowledge to solve exponential equations. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at four different types of exponential equations. We've got them here. We're going to go through them in turn, and we're going to see how we can use the law of indices and the law of logarithms that we've already learned to solve these things that look rather complicated. So let's have a go. Let's go to the first one. So here we've got 5 to the power of x equals 120. How can we solve that? Well, the key to this is to log both sides. So let's just do that. Let's log both sides. We get log 5 to the power of x is equal to log 120. And you can do that because remember with equations, whatever you do to the left-hand side, you also do to the right-hand side, right? So I can log both of these. It's absolutely fine so long as the base of the log is the same. So for simplicity's sake, we're just going to use log base 10. Okay. Now, how does that help? Well, it helps because we can use the third law of logarithms that we learned earlier. For those of you who can't remember that, if we've got log of a to the power of p, then we can simplify that to p times by log a. Okay. So we can apply that to this thing here, because what we've got, we've got x as a power, and we can bring that power down here. So let's do that. Next line, we get x times by log base 10, 5 is equal to log base 10, 120. And then it should be fairly simple to find x, because we just divide through both sides by log 5. We get log base 10, 120, divided by log base 10, 5. And we can just punch that into our calculator, press log 120, divided by log 5, and we will get our answer. I don't have my calculator on me, so I'm not going to calculate that right now, but that's the method. Let's go to the next question, question 2. Now, this looks a lot more complicated, right, because we've got uh, powers on both sides. It's not just power of x, but it's power of x minus 2. And we've got different bases. We've got 4 and 3. But we're just going to apply the same idea. I'm going to log both of these sides, right? Log base 10. I'm going to write that as LG for simplicity. So LG x uh, to the power of x minus 2 is equal to LG 3 to the power of x plus 5. And then what I can do is I can apply the third law of logarithms again. I'm going to bring the powers down. So this will be x minus 2 times by log 4 is equal to x plus 5 times by log 3. Okay. Now remember I want to solve to find x. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to expand these brackets. I'm going to get x log 4 minus 2 log 4 is equal to x log 3 plus 5 log 3. And I'm going to bring uh, the x terms, which are this term and this term, all to the left-hand side. So if I do that, I get x log 4 minus x log 3 is equal to 5 log 3, and I'm going to add the 2 log 4 to both sides, plus 2 log 4. Now, hopefully what you can see now is that since I've got the x's on both sides, right, I've got my x here and my x here, what I can actually do is I can factorize out the x. We get x bracket log 4 minus log is equal to 5 log 3 plus 2 log 4. Now, if you want, we can actually apply the, the rules that we know. Uh, I could say this is log uh, 3 to the 5 plus log 4 squared. I could do that if I want to. I don't think there's a huge uh, point of doing that, as you'll see in a second, uh, but that is something that I could do.
Okay, well, having done that, what we can now do is we can just divide through both sides by log 4 minus log 3. So if I do that, what will I get? I get x is equal to log of 3 to the power of 5 plus log of 4 squared. Well, actually, you can remember this is just log 3 to the 5 times by 4 squared, right? Because I can just apply the first log rule that if I have log a plus log b, that's equal to log a divided by b. Uh, and then here I can get log uh, uh, 4 minus log 3. And again, if I really wanted to, I could apply uh, the rule for the second rule. I would get log 3 to 5, 4 squared, divided by log 4 upon 3, right? Because log a minus log b is equal to log a divided by b. So in the end, what we end up with is with this, with x is equal to this thing. And again, all you can do is just punch that into your calculator. Get log 3 to the 5 times 4 squared divided by log 4 divided by 3. And that's how you get your answer there. OK, well, let's keep going. Let's go to the next one, question 3. Now, this looks uh, very complicated as well, but let's just apply our rule of indices. Our first rule that we had, if you will remember, is if I've got a to the power of x times by a to the power of y, then what I get is a to the power of x plus y. And it actually works the other way around, doesn't it? If I've got a to the power of x plus y, I could rewrite that as a to the x times by a to the y. If you just think about that, this is what I've got here, isn't it? Right? 3 to the x plus 2. I could rewrite that as 3 to the x times by 3 to the power of 2. And I could do the same thing with this as well. I could write this as 3 to the x times by 3 to the power of negative 1, equal to 1 upon 9. And then having done that, what you can see is we should be able to factorize out the 3 to the power of x here. Right, so if I take out 3 to the power of x, what I'm left with is. 3 squared minus 3 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 1 divided by 9. Okay. Now, 3 squared, 3 to the power of 2 is 9. And 3 to the power of negative 1, remember that's 1 upon 3, because the negative means 1 divided by the 1 upon 9. So I end up here with 3 to the power of x, bracket, 9 minus a third. Well, I could write that as 27 thirds minus a third, right? And of course, 27 thirds minus a third is just equal to 26 thirds. So I get 26 uh, thirds here is equal to 1 over 9. So now, if I multiply through right, both sides, so I times by 3 divide by 26, I get a ninth times by 3 upon 26 is equal to 3 to the power of x. But in other words, what have I been able to do? I've been able to take this problem here, right, this big, long, complicated problem, and make it into a simple problem, which is 3 to the power of x is equal to this thing here, which I can now simplify is 1 upon 3 times 26. Right, so that's where I've got to so far. Now we know how to solve this type of problem because we just use our logarithms, right? I write now log 3 to the power of x is equal to log 1 over 3 times 26. And I can bring my power down using the third log rule. I get x log 3 is equal to log. 1 over 3 times by 26. So in the end, x will be equal to log 1 over 3 times 26 divided by log 3. And once again, you can just punch that straight into your calculator if you assume that you're using log base 10. OK, so that's the third question. Let's go through to the fourth and the final question, which is this one. They're getting even harder now. But again, what are we going to do? We're going to use our laws of logarithms. And we're going to use these two specifically, right? We have got this rule, which we've already stated. If I have a to the x times a to the y, that's equal to a to the power of x plus y. 
And if I have a to the x to the power of y, then that's equal to a to the x, y. So I can now apply these rules uh, to each of these, these terms. So this rule in yellow, I can apply to that. And this rule here in green, I can apply to that. So just have a think through with that with me. Two to the power of two x, I could rewrite as two to the x squared. And then two to the power of x plus one, I could rewrite as two to the one times by two to the x. So in the end, what I end up with is two to the x squared minus two times by two to the x minus eight. And what should you notice? You should know this thing here is actually a quadratic. It is a quadratic where two to the power of x is equal to y. Just follow that through with me. If I take each of those two to the x terms and replace it with y, then what you should see is I get a different type of quadratic. I get the quadratic y squared minus 2y minus 8 is equal to 0. And we know how to solve that because that can be factorized to y minus 4, y plus 2 is equal to 0, which gives us two solutions. y is equal to 4 and y is equal to negative 2. And if that's the case, we can just use uh, the substitution that we've, we've uh, said, which is 2 to the x is equal to y, to say, well, then, it's either 2 to the x is equal to 4, or 2 to the x is equal to negative 2. Well, 2 to the x equals negative 2 has got no solutions, right? So we can just cross that out. And 2 to the x equals 4, well, obviously, x must be equal to 2 in that case, right? So in, in this particular situation, what are you doing? Well, you're converting a, a difficult exponential problem into a quadratic, okay? And the way you do that is just patiently applying the laws of indices, the laws of logarithms that you already have. Okay, guys, now I'm hoping that this will be enough for you at least to get started on exercise 6.5. Let me know how you get on. Uh, but obviously there are gonna be some things right, so try to apply the rules that you've learned to solve the things that you don't know. And we'll come back and we'll discuss it together. Okay, take care guys. I will see you again next time.